Welcome back, pet junkies. We are so excited to have you for this week's episode because we are just gushing all about why we are so obsessed with our pets. And we know you are too. That is why you are here. So this is going to be a super fun and exciting episode. You never know what we're going to say, what is going to come out of our mouths, but we are focused on why we are so obsessed with not only our pets, but your pets. So let's dive in to today's episode. Why are we so obsessed? As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day. Because when we know better, we can do better. Well, I can blame it on my parents. Um, I know that when I was a baby, I was born in December and like the month of like December the 9th. Right. And so my parents had all the Christmas decorations up and they had this big stocking that they put me in. And I have pictures <laughs> of me in a stocking sticking out of the, you know, the top of a stocking on the floor with a white kitty cat right next to me. So I was imprinted oh, very early and I just blame it on them. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. yeah that's so i've i grew up with pets too but i didn't have that great of a big an introduction to them like you did <laughs> i get it from a yeah one of the one of the yeah one of the better things we can blame our parents for right <laughs> yes yes he definitely passed on his love for cats to me for sure your dad. Yeah. That's so fun. So funny because I, I literally cannot go back. Like when you go back through all the pictures of you when you're little and you know, the things that your parents and your grandparents kind of stow away and show you when you get older, it's like every, every other picture of me, I'm holding a cat, like whether it is, and it's just some random cat. Don't even know whose cats these were. When I remember when I was really, really little, um, my family, my grandparents are all, they live in North Carolina and it, it was just probably not too different now than it was back then, but basic, you know, animals lived outside kind of thing. And I, I literally would just walk around the house and find a mom cat and her kittens underneath a bush. Like this, this was normal for me. <laughs> like just, oh, Jessica found another cat. <laughs> It was happening all the time. Or did they find me? I don't know. So that's funny. True. That's great. My, my first memory of pets are also cats. It's funny that we all three, you know, started out in life with cats. But it was my godmother, um, Mary Beth, who I lovingly call Bebes, because she's probably listening. My godmother's boyfriend, um, Bruce, actually gave me three cats. And I don't have any idea what my parents thought, but like you just said, you know, they were outdoors and they were beach ball, tiger and surfboard. <laughs> that, <laughs> those were their names. And, you know, I don't remember the demise of the three cats. I mean, for all I know, my parents got rid of them, um, but it was just a very different world in the seventies. And um, then I remember I had a rabbit, hamsters, we had squirrels birds, fish. Um, I had a turtle and there was a, we had one dog and, and she, her name was Kathy with a K 
She was a long-haired black dachshund, and we thought like Pekingese mix, and she followed me home from elementary school, and we had her for a very short time. We just had her for three years, and she passed away. She had a heart attack is what the veterinarian told us. Yeah, so it was very sudden. It was very tragic, and it was very sad, and um, I talk about her in my store a lot, just like I do talk about Rio, who my logo is an homage to. So while I started out with the three kitties, I think that Kathy and then Rio subsequently made the biggest impact on me and really touched my heart. And, um, you know, people talk about, uh, and, and Rio was my very first border Aussie, Australian Shepherd Border Collie mix that I got my senior year at Texas A&M. And, um, he was just such a brilliant, loyal dog. And again, like Kathy, you know, touched my heart. I didn't have him very long. The situation that, you know, occurred after that meant that I, I went one way and he had to go another. He went to live on the farm with my former in-laws. Um, and he lived a long, happy life. I, I was later told, but I never have forgotten him or Kathy. And I don't know about the cat people versus dog people thing. I mean, you get just like people versus people, you get something different from everyone and every living creature. And so right now, you know, I did go through a phase in my twenties and thirties and even into my forties, our early forties, where all I had were cats. Um, and it was a decision ma- based on being res- a sp- responsible pet parent because my lifestyle meant that I wasn't at home much at all. And cats are fiercely more independent than dogs. And so I didn't think it was fair. It wasn't the right time for me in my adult life to get dogs. And it wasn't until um, Chris and I got married in 2012 that we came home from our honeymoon and we like to say that we got twins um, because a friend of mine had a litter of Australian shepherds and we went, we, we flew in from our honeymoon on a Saturday and on Sunday we went to see her at her farm and we picked up not one, but two. (laughs) And that is Hank and Charlie. So we got married and a week later we had twins and um, they are the (laughs) genesis of my decision to open up a, pet store that focuses on healthy pet food and solutions for, you know, health issues. Mm -hmm. I owe it to them. That's That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it it, it is interesting, the things that happen to us as we grow up, because I know I didn't have the, the best, as you called it, Pam, imprinting (laughs) Um, as I was a child growing up with pets because I I just, and and why I always had cats for so long and and not dogs is because I grew up with dogs were, they lived outside and they were there for hunting purposes and that like that, they weren't inside pets until I was older and I I was a teenager. And then my mom decided that she wanted a dog we adopted a dog. She, oh, she was beautiful. Be- I don't even know what she, she She looked like um, Lassie, like a collie, but um, she, I guess, had some health issue and we only had her for like a week. And then I have no idea what happened to her. I was a child, um, but I think, I think they relinquished her because she had some health, some sort of health condition they weren't willing to deal with. But, but things like that happen and it really shapes how you view like how, how I didn't know growing up that there was any other way to, to have pets. Like even the the cats I had when I was little, they were outside cats. They weren't, animals weren't allowed in the house. And so when I first got out on my own, I just thought, that, you know, that that's not how I want, it didn't feel right to me. So I didn't want to have pets because I felt like I didn't want them living outdoors. And then once I did get a cat, he was, he was hybrid indoor, outdoor. (laughs) And he, uh, I, I pretty, pretty quickly learned that I didn't, 
I didn't like that. He, he got, he got out one night, um, and I couldn't find him all night long, was out in the snow all night long looking for him. Fortunately, a neighbor had taken him in because it was so cold Mm -hmm. and let him back out in the morning and I got him. But like after that, I was like, no more outdoor. We're not doing outside anymore. (laughs) And, And from there, I kind of was like, coming into my own is like how as to how I wanted to be a pet parent, right? Like breaking away from how things were always done as I was, as I was a child and realizing that that didn't have to be the way it was for me as an adult. Um, and that really changed things for me. And of course made me the, for, to anybody who knew me at the time, the crazy, crazy cat person. <laughs> With the twelve cats indoors in a feral colony outside. <laughs> Did you really have twelve cats? Kevin. Uh, how many? Oh, Ke- Kevin. Twelve. That's cute. Um. Yeah. When I, I know. said I agree, I wasn't agreeing that you were a crazy cat person. That was perfect timing, though. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that. <laughs> You mentioned Jessica that it that your um, your thoughts on how to raise and care for and keep you know cats changed, and so you obviously um, went to the other side and said, "Nope, you're going to be indoor kitties." And that you made me stop to think for a minute because I don't remember ever having an outdoor, um, indoor outdoor hybrid cat or kitten as an adult. You know, when when you're young and you're in your parents' house, you don't get a say so in the rules, or at least we didn't in in my day. Um, nowadays, it's mm-hmm. different. But um, and mm-hmm. even now, our five dogs are strictly indoor. They go outside to play and go on walks, and you know, to potty and sun, and you know, chase squirrels and birds and anything else they can. But they are very acclimated and have always been you know indoor. Um, pets. And I think for me, it's just a a sense of safety and knowing that all my Mm -hmm. pets are under the same roof and accounted for. Um, And an interesting story, Mm -hmm. we we have new neighbors that have moved in from out of state and they have uh, one cat and one dog. And we saw this cat perched on top of our fence when we came home two nights in a row and knowing that they had a cat, I had made mention of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, coyotes and the red foxes that we have that roam around our neighborhood. And the it was a few nights later or a week later, I can't remember, but I saw on the next door app that somebody had taken in a cat that was seen strayed, you know, walking around one block over. So I shot the picture, sent it to her. And said, hey, I I don't know if this is your cat because I'd only seen her cat. Well, I saw the cat two nights in a row. I didn't know if it was their cat and it was dark. But I said, is this your cat? You know, we just came home. And sure enough, the red fox had run across the street in front of our headlights just a few doors down. So she, you know, she said, thank you. Her, you know, her cat was okay and inside and that they would, you know, have him in at night. Um, It's just you know, you think about, you have to think about where you live and where we live, there's a lot of wildlife. And therefore, like we have a small dog as well. And I've seen owls, hawks, and even buzzards flying over our backyard. And I, I just have this vision of her being picked up by their talons and carried away. And that just frightens me, you know, so indoor, all the way <laughs> and very pampered. They're, they're my kids. And I think we share that. That's something that our mm-hmm. listeners may not realize, but the three of us share that um, amongst other things that we all have fur babies. No, right? I have a stepson, a grown stepson, but I don't have any of my own biological children. I've always been a fur mama. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, I feel like they are, they need us and they depend on us and I want to give them the best life possible. And they're here for such a short time that it just, 
it makes me happy to take care of them. It makes me happy to Mm -hmm. feed them good food. It makes me happy to not give them pesticides and chemicals and um, like flea tick and heartworm medicine. You know, we do natural and it makes me happy that, you know, they're all seniors and yes, even though one of ours is living with cancer at the age of 11 and a half, um, he's doing very well and he's outlived his prognosis by seven months already. So um, that makes me happy. I'm just that, that mom. <laughs> Give them love by what we choose to, you know, put into their bodies as well as the environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are babies. We do anything for them. You know? Mm-hmm. We just, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I want to, I want to, I was thinking about this episode and like, okay, are we, you know, how's this going to go? Um, Cause we wanted to talk about happy things and what led yes. us to become, you know, who we are, why we do what we do and why we are the way we are um i think you know for me as a child i always took up for the underdog and i would think that the two of you did too and i've always had a soft spot for seniors senior citizens and you know disabled pets thing you know people and pets that rely on us other humans you know being kind but the other thing and this happened at a market days recently is we had a customer that came up with her bulldog pulling him in a stroller not a stroller a wagon and he is a rescue and he came to her with one third of his body um missing hair and just his skin was you know dark in color And Mm -hmm. she had been to several veterinarians and had been given the traditional, you know, pharmaceuticals and, uh, and prognoses. And it just, it didn't sit right with her. And she wandered into our store after being referred um, by a coworker. And we've tried several things. And just like, you know, all of our clients, she's um, just, okay, this, here's the result that we got from trying a, Let's move on to B. You know, what else can we try? We're seeing a little bit of improvement. What else can we add? And so we've slowly over the past, you know, several months been, you know, adding things and um, to his, you know, diet and to his supplements. And most recently we had a new product that came into the store, but we took a different approach and we're doing three topicals. Um, And one is a topical. treatment as well as an internal treatment that can be ingested. And when she pulled up with um, her dog in the wagon, she goes, look, we have hair growth. And in the middle of his, you know, black once bald little um, patch, her, excuse me, we had like a two by three patch of hair, tan, beautiful hair, regrowth it was just so amazing and she was so happy and so tickled and um interestingly a passerby walked by our booth while she was there and also has bulldogs and so he stopped to talk to her and to he goes i have found the answer to that that problem speaking of um cookies hair loss and he proceeded to talk to her about shots Mm. and yeah. And so I just had one ear listening and she goes, Oh no, 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 no. She goes, I'm not interested in doing shots. And you know, those have other side effects and you know, it doesn't fix the problem. It just is a band aid, and you need to go see these ladies. <laughs> and I just thought that is why we are so passionate about what we do is that we have helped one pet parent And obviously we had helped another pet parent that she worked with who referred her to us. So we've helped this Mm -hmm. second pet parent who is now talking to other pet parents about 
um, other options, natural options, healthier ways to perhaps look into, because we know it's not for everybody, but I just love it because we're getting the ripple effect and that I get excited yes. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't see the current way we practice practice medicine <laughs> in my quote fingers in the U S as sustainable. And when we can help people to realize more natural alternatives to actually allow the body to heal itself, that is sustainable. That is something that you can not only feel like really a sense of pride that you did something that you did something that it, it w was not going to cause any harm to anyone around you or them, <laughs> right? And it made a difference in that pet's life. Like that, that is, that's special. Yeah. That, that's special, I think. I agree. Well, and you're not only making a difference in that pet's life, you're touching the life of the pet owner, the guardian. You're changing their life. So, you know, our, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, inevitably, we're, we're changing lives every day yes. with what we do. Yeah. You know, it's a byproduct the world of, of working with the pets. Yes, we're, ma we're changing lives. We're saving lives one pet at a time. And that's awesome. That's an awesome mm -hmm. job. It's an mm -hmm. awesome privilege to be able to, mm -hmm. to do that, you know, yeah. and make a difference. It is. I feel it like is. Um, yeah. in our store above the door, it says love one another. And it's a reminder to everyone who comes through and as they exit, as they leave to remember to be kind and to put love into the world because we have so much of the opposite. And um, mm -hmm. I feel like you said, Pam, it's a great privilege. Um, to do what we do. And you, I could have never guessed, you know, 10 years ago or 20 or 30 or year, year, you know, years ago that this is what I would end up doing during this chapter of my life. I knew I always wanted a business, but I did not know exactly what kind of business. And it's Hank and Charlie and then Jack and Eli. <laughs> and then Mitzi came along the year I opened my store. But um, it's all of them that I owe that to and the pets that, you know, cross my path. You know, I was always trying to save, mm -hmm. you know, pets. And um, I remember one litter of kittens, a tomcat. Um, again, this is back in the 70s or 80s. So they lived outside and we had a litter of kittens in the garage. The hamsters were in the garage. Um, the birds were in the house. Even the squirrels were allowed to live in the house. They... <laughs> They, they lived in a closet in the hallway that had a vent in it. It's where the return air was. And they had a box in there and they occasionally would come out and lay on my brother's twin beds and they would air out. Have you ever seen them in airplane mode where they're sprawled out? <laughs> they were cooling off. Um, but it, and eventually they went back outside, but we raised them when they were little. And um, anyhow, the, the Tomcat got one of the kittens and I chased him down. And I got the kitten back and I remember, I can see it like it was yesterday. I ran into the kitchen and my mom was there and I was bawling my head off. And I went and got the tiny band-aids from the band-aid box, the little <laughs> tiny, tiny ones, because the cat had sliced him open on, on, or him or her on, <laughs> so across its side. So the lungs, you know, I didn't know that what was inevitable, but. I wanted to take him to the vet and I was crying and begging my mom and I just got the band aid and I tried to put it across the, the where the cat had, you know, claw had cut the him wind. open. And I, my mom was very stoic and just explained to me that, you know, nothing was going to help. But that has always stuck with me as trying to just wanting to rescue all of them. And if I can't rescue mm -hmm. all of them, then maybe we can teach and educate um the community that we're you know we are you know exposed to to find a better gentler kinder way 
of raising and treating, you know, pets and, and anybody mm -hmm. that is, you know, at the mercy of others, if you think about it, mm -hmm. you know, rely on for care. Yeah. Well, and to kind of go back to what you were saying that as you were, you know, when you were ever since you were a child, you've kind of been the advocate for like the underdog. I think, I think for me, it's, it's been a little bit different. I think as I have grown and learned more, especially in these past few years, what I've realized now that I would have never known <laughs> back then is a lot of what led me down this path was trauma in childhood and the fact that animals are safe. They are always going to be there. They're loving. They need you. And when you care for them, that feeling that you get of you know, well, accomplishment for one, right? Especially if you are someone who like feels stuck or feels like, you you know, what you're doing in life doesn't matter. You don't have a purpose. Like that gives you a purpose. Mm -hmm. And especially if you don't have human children. <laughs> and, but what I've, what I've realized, and we've, I know we've said in the past that like all of the animals come to us for a reason they're all teaching us something, something that we need to know. And hopefully we learn, <laughs> learn the lesson. Otherwise it might get, uh, might get beat into us a little bit harsher later on if we don't. But what I, what I have found is that the more I learn to care for my pets, the more I learn to care for myself and that it has, and I know we, we've talked about this before too, that a lot of us, there's pretty much two different paths we, we have. You're going to find the person that does better for their pets and then therefore learns how to do better for themselves or vice versa, where they have something that comes up in their life and they learn how to better care for themselves. And then they're like, oh, light bulb, I need to do this for my pets too. And for me, it was very much a taking care of my pets has led me into caring, caring more, taking better care of myself, which has kind of allowed me to look back and see this like path of trauma that really has, you know, led me to where I am. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. They turn, they help transform you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think absolutely I they teach us so much if we're listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really do. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting. The more, and this is a little off topic, but I'm sure it will resonate with somebody out there, probably many people out there, because I am also that person that really likes t true crime. And I, I also really like horror movie. Like the, that's just the kind of stuff I, I tend to watch. I, I gravitate towards. And one thing I actually recently heard today from a doctor who um, specializes in trauma, she said, if you are the kind of person, and I don't specifically watch this show, but she said, if you're the kind of person that you go to, when you come home from work at night and your idea of resting and relaxing is watching three episodes of, you know, Law and Order before you go to bed at night, why, like, you need to stop and ask yourself, why is that? And what she has found is that, that you're, that is comforting to you because trauma is all you know. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. And that like really, really hit me hard and resonated with me and kind of, I felt like it tied in a little bit with the, the trauma. Cause I feel like a lot of people really are on some sort of journey to try to heal themselves, whether they know it or not. And for me, animals have been a big, big part of that because they are so consistent and they love you no matter what. <laughs> and they are so forgiving when you aren't doing the right things because you don't know better, you know, like it, we are much harder on ourselves than they are on us. And it, it kind of eases the blow a little bit when we realize that we could have been doing something better all this, all this time. 
the, the fact that they're like, I don't care. You were still here for me and fed me and I still love you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> unconditional love. Yeah. Their love is so unconditional. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the best thing about story. pets. The best thing. <laughs> Do you have a favorite pet? Out of all the pets that y'all have had, is there one? I mean, I know, like I said, that I remember Kathy and then Rio, and now I have these five, and you know, I've had so many kitties. But do y'all did y'all have a fa favorite one? I had a. I mean, Be my honest. soul cat was Hershey. My soul cat yeah. was Hershey, and he was just. He was such a mama's boy and he just wanted to be held and loved and um, held and loved and held and loved. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh -huh. like like just loved, hold right? me. He just wanted to held yeah. all the time. And I would joke that I needed to get one of those, those Serapi blankets or, you know, the... <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Like you put the papoose. Yeah. Yeah. One of those yeah. things that was wrapped around for, for women who had a baby, who have babies and they put, you know, that's what yeah. I really needed for him because he a just wanted to be born. held. Yes. Yes. That's what yeah. he needed. Um, he and I had a, just an amazing connection. Um, and I think now Aylin is kind of that. She's kind mm -hmm. of stepped into that. She is, she is mama's girl, but she was mama's girl. The minute I picked her up, she, there's just a connection there. It's, she's mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. And I love all of my babies, but, and I, I truly, truly do. But there's just some pets that we just have a different, it's beautiful and it's a deeper connection. You know, it's hard to put into words. Yeah, I it, I kind of feel like, yeah, they're all so different, mm -hmm. and that is it's it's hard for me to say that anyone was a a favorite. Of course, I have pets that we went through more like difficult situations together, so those kind of stand out just because you know i mean when you go through something that's really traumatic or that's really trying that of course is going to change the bond you have it's going to increase the level of uh you know trust and intimacy that you have um which sounds weird but i think you know what i mean and um of course my first dog that i ever adopted on my own claire that's always going to be special for me because she was my, you know, first, first dog. Um, I had had many cats up, up to that point, but being the first dog I adopted, of course, I, she was a freaking hot mess. So we went through a lot together as well. And she was also the one that helped me realize the power of fresh food because, you know, in feeding her real whole foods, her seizures stopped. Yeah. And that, so that's also something that like, I will never, ever forget. Um, and of course, you know, we had, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I mean, they're all, I don't, I don't know that I could pick one to be a fa Of course, Kim, I love Kimberly to death. She is just the absolute best. I know I tell you all the time, my husband's like, she can never die. You have to make sure she lives forever because she's just such an amazing dog. Um, and I mean, all of my cats have been just, they have all taught me so many different things and their personalities are so different um, that it's hard. It's hard to pick just one because it's all, there's. they've just taught me so many different things. And none of them are, I don't want to like push any of them aside and say they're not important because they're all so important. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think. Well, so, okay. Yeah. I have like a heart dog, Hank. Hank is my heart dog. The one that we were fighting, you know, cancer together. Um, he's taught me so much um, about my own health journey and about, you know, 
trying to figure out ways to take better care of, Mm -hmm. you know, myself and even, you know, Chris and Charlie did the same thing. Charlie is responsible for me waking up and paying attention to flea tick and heartworm control or mosquito control. He refused to eat the beef flavored chew um, one day. This was over nine years ago. They were, they would have been like two. And at the time we had, we either had three or four of the dogs, but you know, that's expensive because you buy it based on weight. And I think it, you Mm -hmm. know, the price goes up bigger, the dog. And, um, he refused to eat it. And I, I became very animated in my attempt to feed him this pesticide, right? So I was chasing him around with his nose. You know, he was, he would move his face left to right. My hand would follow his nose and tried to put it in his mouth. And literally I was trying to force the issue to see how adamant he was about, I am not going to put that in my mouth and eat that. I'm smarter than you. And so after several attempts, I said, okay. And I had, I remembered the time before when I had given it to them, you know, I thought I was being a bad pet parent because I wasn't doing it every 30 days. I did not feel good about it because I could smell the Mm -hmm. chemicals and it, it smelled exactly like what we would put on our lawn. And at the Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. I didn't even Mm -hmm. make a connection that their paw pads are like little sponges and they go out in the yard. Yeah. After it dries, it's safe for kids. It's safe for pets. I beg to differ now. I think it's all a bunch of BS, but, um, Mm -hmm. I, you know, they'd go run around the backyard and we, anyhow, we, I was giving them the treatment, but I wasn't doing it every 30 days. It was expensive and I didn't feel good about it, but I didn't understand why. And that's another thing that the pets have taught me is how to listen to myself and to my intuition and to my gut. And so I encourage everybody to tune in, you know, tune into yourself and really listen to yourself. And if you have a question, pause, go do some research and then restart. But yep, that day made me get up off my butt, go to my computer with the actual box that we were, you know, had the poison in it. And I went and researched each of those scientific Mm -hmm. names on the insert and on the box, the active ingredients. And I was shocked and I was confused and I was hurt and I was confused and I was dumbfounded and confused because I'm like, why would they give this to a living creature? Right. And, and Chris, you probably remember what? the day that Charlie, the, the final time that Charlie would not take his flea tick and heartworm chew. Uh, remember that? Uh-huh. And I said, I don't care if we spent $200 on this crap. It's going in the trash. And I said, I will. I looked at my dogs. I said, I will never give you this trash again. And y'all, I didn't know about natural flea tick and, and mosquito control. But that was not anywhere on my radar. But I knew Mm -hmm. that I was going to have to find a different way. And mind you, I lived in Houston at the time, which, OMG, you get carried away by mosquitoes that are the size of buzzards. Jeez. So, you know, and we walked the dogs like five, six days a week. We'd go run them on the fields. And I don't know, but by the grace of God, I mean, they have been safe and pest free and heartworm free. And that, like I said, that was nine years ago. And now they're all nine to 13 years of age. But um, it wasn't until I opened my shop and I started, you know, that, you know, what products am I going to carry that I finally found after that many years, um, which I guess that had been five years. I finally found, you know, alternatives to that. But going back to the origin of this story, it was, you know, I find he taught me to listen and question and research. And then Hank is special for a different reason. He is my, my heart dog. He picked me when we went to get Charlie 
Hank came right up to me, put his little head between my feet, peed on me. <laughs> Hi, buddy. He's, he's right here. Hi, Hanky. <laughs> peed on me and then proceeded to like lay down in it and go to sleep. <laughs> Hi, bud. Oh, my gosh. And he was the the runt of the litter. Um, so anyhow, he, he came home with Charlie and Hank has taught me a lot about um, you know, there are better ways than Cytopoint, Apoquel, and steroids, you know, yep. for um, allergies, sensitivities. But he did the typical at five years of age. You know, his immune system is broken down. I'd been feeding him crappy food, crappy kibble, Purina, ProPlan, Blue Buffalo, and nothing. I just throw it in the bowl and go. Nice and convenient. Hey. And I, it makes me sick to my stomach now. Um. Oh, hi, Aylin. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> oh, see her hi. there. Cute. See, see. But anyhow, he because he started with the you know itching. Like we all see, we all see. We know what happens when the gut is not supported, and we do vaccines mm -hmm. and we do antibiotics and leaky gut, and they don't absorb nutrients. Their immune system breaks down, and then they start to scratch and itch. And it was mm -hmm. Cytopoint Apoquel. And mm -hmm. uh, I still have the Apoquel in my refrigerator from 20, when was that? 2014? 20, no, no, 20, 2016, I believe it is. It's 2016. Um, it would be 2017. Why? <laughs> yeah, okay. I still, it's a reminder. Mm. It's, a, it's a testament. It's like, remember okay. when... You were told as long as you're not a hoarder. No, no, no. Right? Okay, no, no. Um, no clutter. But I do have instead of a butter dish, I have all their like menagerie of medicines that they've been given over the years. Mm -hmm. And it's a reminder um to me to say, you know, this was a path that we could have gone down, but because of your love for them and your you know curiosity about a healthier way like jessica you mentioned earlier about sustainability and um it's it's just different and, and it's it's better it's sustainable it's healthier it's less harm for everyone involved and i believe that it's mm -hmm. another way that i could put good into the world and so it's by treating them well and not causing harm so yeah, his Apoquel mm -hmm. is still in the, the butter dish. I Obviously, I never gave it to him. I think I probably gave it to him one or two days, and then I did the same thing. I'm like, this is, hello. And um, <laughs> I said, this isn't a way that we're going to, you know, keep going. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so different pets have had different a different connection. Rio was all about... Mm -hmm being a college student and again, not knowing what I was doing. And I apologize to that dog to this day, but he was inspiration for me. And he was my buddy at a time when, you know, I was a very young, naive adult going through some hard times after college. Um, and then there's Hank and his, you know, health journey and uh, Tucker and Georgie, my cats, um, they themselves, you know, Georgie was there when I went through my divorce and he was very much like a dog. Um, just, you could set a timer to him and at 10 30, he would move from his perch. I would be in the study downstairs and he would move from the study with me to the bottom of the stairs and look back at me like, come on, mom, it's time to go to bed. We need to get our sleep. And then we'd go to bed and he'd sleep next to me and I'd wake up, he'd be on my head and, um, you know, Chris did not like cats. And I said, well, you know, if you're going to go out with me, you're going to learn to love cats. <laughs> and he did. And we lost Georgie in 2016. It was um, mm -hmm. right when I was leaving corporate America and starting my pop-up shop. Um, mm -hmm. And he was, he was 16 years old. He was a great cat. So Tucker was 12. I will say, I don't think I ever knew you had cats, Janet. <laughs> I think this is the you first time me. I've found out. You've only really known me in this time of my life. And what's interesting is that my friends that have known me for 20 plus years, 
would say, when did you, when did you start liking dogs? dogs? And I was like, yeah. I always liked dogs. I didn't have them because my lifestyle, I had mm-hmm. cats. Mm-hmm. So I had Tucker, Bella and Emmy all at once. And then I got a divorce and Emmy and Bella went with my ex-husband and Tucker came with me. And then after Tucker passed away, um, I adopted Georgie. He was a beautiful blue Persian. And um, I wanted a Gigi to go with my Georgie, but that never happened. <laughs> we still have time. We do. I've been thinking we lately do. about getting a big orange kitty. They're fun. Ooh. My sister always has orange cats. And she names mm-hmm. them fun names like Fanta, Cheese, Mac. I mean, it's just funny. But um, I think they're great cats. I'll have another one. Oh. I, I I like, I don't know why. I don't, I just, it just popped into my head that I have human names for pretty much all yeah. of my yeah. animal. When I was a little, I did have a cat. Um, and of course she was outside and her name was Kitsky. So that wasn't a human name, but I feel like every animal I've had since then no, my very first cat as an adult when I was 18, his name was Shadow. But ever since then, I think they have all had human names. Yeah. We have a I, we have a country western band currently. Yeah. We have Hank, Charlie, Jack, Eli, and Mitzi. Mitzi's the lead singer. Okay. <laughs> I've I've never had human names for my cats ever. No, that I can. No. Mm-mm. I always have Mm-mm. human names. Yeah, not when I was mm-hmm. little. Well, I, but I, know my I wanted first them dog, to be Kathy. unique. Huh? Mm-hmm. I wanted them to be unique, like no. the individuals that you know, the kitties mm-hmm. that they were. <laughs> so you fun. name yours based on a connection. Yeah. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like. Oh, I almost spilled the beans. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, put those right back in. <laughs> I, don't like, I yeah. remember I remember the orange kitty that I had in college. I named him Ashlyn. Oh, and cute. I had after him I got Shasta. And because I went to the University of Houston and the cougar's name was Shasta. Oh, yeah, so that's how yeah. I got Shasta. And I was at U of H at the time. And then Shasta had kittens and I kept one and his name was Tosh. And um, after that, uh, we we adopted Casper and Kiwi and Pepper came along like a a rescue stray and after him came Hershey. Some of those are human names. Yeah. Well, Pepper. Could be. In in this day, in this day and age, it could be, right? (laughs) I've known a couple of Hershey's. Yeah. Well, he Mm -hmm. was dark like chocolate. So that's how he got his name. Oh, cute. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he was a brown. Um, and then Snow Bear yeah. and then Lily. Lily, you know, human flower, whatever. Um, but she was white. So it was like, a, it was a very appropriate name. Um, and then. These are all symbolic. And then Rocket yes. and Gunner. And it was all yeah. ex military term. You know, was ex was ex military. So the kittens were military names. <laughs> Rocket yeah. and Gunner. And then Aylin came mm-hmm. along and Aylin's name means happiness in a, one of the Native American languages. That's neat. Mm-hmm. That's neat. Mm. Yeah. So Rocket, you know, in, in Europe, that's what they call arugula is Rocket. That's what I always think of when you say Rocket. <laughs> arugula? Arugula? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. They call it rocket. I know they do in Italy. I think they do in other parts of Europe. Yeah. The like you'll go, the you'll go. Arugula? Yeah. The, like, the, the, yeah, you'll the, like, you'll look at a menu and it'll be like a rocket salad. And you're like, what is that? And oh, it's, okay. it's arugula. That's arugula. what they call arugula. <laughs> okay. 
Interesting. <laughs> wow. Okay. I learned something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I always think of now. Oh, when awesome. when I hear you say rocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I wish that sometimes I wish that we had an audience here when we do this because I would love to hear about other people's you know pets in in particular that touched them or something cute about the how your pet got its name, name. you know why did you name mm -hmm. it what you did and because I love those connections so mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I think, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I, I was kind of thinking that was, that would be how we would end the episode anyway, is by telling people to come on social media, whether it's to any one of our pages or uh, whatever we put, because I always, you know, post a little snippet or clip about the episode on social media and um, just comment on, on any of our pages about your connection with your pets or like you just said, Janet, like um, some of your favorite names of pets you've had and, and, or just why you're so obsessed with your pets. Like just come on and let us know. And I know for me, I will absolutely um, any message comments or messages I get about this episode, letting me know about your pets. I will share them to my stories on Instagram um, because, you know, thank you so much but for taking the time out of your day to come onto my page and, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I know I'm sure can speak for Pam and Janet in saying that, uh, I certainly appreciate you and your dedication to your pets. Um, and I know that you do have a dedication to your pets because you're listening to this podcast. So, Come onto any of our pages, any of our social media pages. Let us know about you and your pets, why you love them so much, uh, and maybe even share some of the names, some of the more funny names. I would love to see some funny names, <laughs> some fun funky names for pets that are not very common. And um, for sure, I know I will share to my stories <laughs> anything anybody uh, posts about their pets. I have one before we go. A customer came in just two days ago. And they have a cat and a dog and his, I said, what is your cat's name again? And he said, it, it's Frank, but oftentimes I call him Franklin. And when he gets in trouble, I call him Francis. <laughs> 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 and I, I mean, just from what is your cat's name again? And then we got boom, boom, boom. I just think that shows a connection. And he was just so deadpan about it. And I just thought how, I just love that. That is so funny. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> Francis. <laughs> I want to know what Francis is doing when Frank Franklin becomes Francis. I want to know uh -huh. what exactly he is doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Being a cat. I will say. <laughs> yeah, right. Probably. I will say it is. I find it very difficult right now for, for many years, actually. I have a Riley and a Romeo. And I know them, I know, I obviously know which one is Riley and which one is Romeo, but for some reason, I think because they both start with R's, I always call them the wrong name. Yes. Yep. Same. <laughs> Just like my parents, whenever I, I remember my mother, it, we all have J names. And so mm -hmm. there's James, Janet, and Julie. And if, she could be talking to me, but she'd say James, she'd say Julie, then finally land on Janet. And I did that today. I was talking, trying to get the word Hank out, but I kept saying, what are you doing, Charlie? I mean, Jack, I mean, Eli, I mean, Hank. <laughs> I don't know what the glitch was, but my elevator was not at the top. It is a glitch in the system for sure. And what? It is a glitch in the system. Absolutely. Yes. It was like, I guess when we have that many pets and you know, you reach yes. a certain limit <laughs> in your day and your brain power. <laughs> it's like you right there. <laughs> I know. And Pam, you have to see like just little cream streaks going. You're like, wait, which one was that? <laughs> I know. Who was that? I know. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. true. Thank you. 
Thank you guys. I can't wait to see the comments and hear some of the names and the connections. I know me too. Don't forget to do that. Go to any of our social medias and let us know about um, the connections you have with your pets. I can't wait to, to read about those as well. And uh, I would also like to ask a huge favor pretty, pretty please. If you are listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to follow the podcast if you are not already and give us a review and a rating. Hopefully it's a five-star rating. If you've listened this far, I would imagine it would be. But when you do that, it not only helps the algorithm for Apple and Spotify know what kind of podcasts you like, it helps boost the ratings on the show so we can reach more pet parents like you. Yeah. And also, when you do that, when you leave the, the rating and the um, review, screenshot it and share it and tag me on Instagram at the Pet Parenting Reset. I will absolutely love you forever and I will, I will share it and let the world know how wonderful of a pet parent you are as well. And tag yes. at Pupology, Pupology <laughs> ATX on Instagram, Pupology on Facebook. We love to sh hear from our followers, our customers, our fellow pet parents. And like Jessica said, I'm always sharing anything that I get tagged in that is you know, appropriate. <laughs> I will right. share it. Always want to share the love. We love you guys. Absolutely. And perfectly holistic on Instagram and Facebook. Definitely tag me too. Yes. Tag all three of us. I didn't want to speak for you, but tag all three of us. All right. All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Please give your pets some extra love from us, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.